Welcome in. I'm Kimberly. This is Pretty Over 50 where we talk everything makeup, skincare, and style for the over 50 woman. How do we make cheekbones? <laughs> when there aren't any anymore. As we grow older, our cheeks might lose a little bit of their fullness and not look quite as plump and juicy as they did when we were younger. What can we do to create the look of a little bit fuller, plumper cheek area? That's what we're gonna be talking about today. If you're new here, I'm so glad you stopped by. I hope you'll consider subscribing while you're here and make sure you click that notification bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. Today I'm gonna to walk through the entire process of creating a little fuller, plumper cheekbone area step by step. We're going to be talking about exactly how to create planes and angles on your face, create the look of shadow and depth, and also how to bring an area forward to make your cheeks look fuller. We'll be talking about the difference between bronzer and contour and where to place blush and highlight for the most flattering look. With today's tutorial, I'm gonna show you exactly how to go from this to this in a few easy steps. As always, all products that I use and mention today, as well as all the makeup that's on my face will be listed and linked below, so super easy for you to find. And with that, let's hop into the demo. I have most of my makeup done. What's left to do is contour, bronzer, blush, and highlight. Today I'm gonna to be working with four products and I will have all the rest of the products that are on my face listed in the description box down below. For contour, I'm going to be using the Kat Von D. This is her gel contour. This is actually a dupe for the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Contour Wand, which I absolutely love. Unfortunately, it's sold out a lot. This is available. I'm in the color Fair Light. For bronzer, I'm going to be using the Milani Silky Matte Bronzer. This is in the color Sunkissed. This is a fabulous drugstore priced product and really is a beautiful application for mature skin. For blush today, I'm going to be using the Makeup by Mario in Poppy. This is his powder blush. I love this blush. It is so pretty on mature skin. And for highlight, I'm also using Makeup by Mario. This is his highlighter, his powder highlighter in the color Pearl. What I can say about the Makeup by Mario products, particularly the powder products, they melt into the skin. They are so pretty, and I find they work really, really well for my more mature skin because they don't sit on top and look like powder is on my skin. They actually melt in and look so pretty. There are tons of contours, bronzers, blushes, and highlights out in the market Place. These are just the ones I'm going to use today because they're some of my favorites. You'll notice that I have contour and bronzer. Do you need both? <laughs> no. And I rarely use both. You can use one or the other or both. I'm going to be using both today just to show you a little bit of difference between contouring and bronzing because it's subtle but I think it's important. When we think about contouring the cheeks and creating cheekbones, what we're really doing is fooling the eye. In other words, we're taking the shapes and angles on our face and adjusting them a little bit using dark and light. One thing you wanna keep in mind when you are contouring and creating cheekbones on your face is that dark will make the area recede and light will make the area come forward. So a good way to remember that is things are hidden in the dark or they recede, you can't quite see them as well. And when things come into the light, they're very, very visible. So that's a clever way to remember what you want to push back, you want to create a little darker area, what you want to bring forward like your cheekbones, you wanna create a little bit lighter area. When I'm working on contouring my face, what I'm doing is actually creating shadows where none really exist. What that does is shape my face and make the ankles look a little bit different. So if I want to push something back or make that area of my face look like it's receding, I'll put some darker contour there, making sure to blend it in so it looks seamless. Today I'm gonna to be contouring several areas of my face, not just the cheekbones. When I'm contouring, the whole concept for me, because I'm older, is to lift. 
In other words, I am creating shapes and planes and angles on my face to make my face look a little bit more lifted. I'm going to take that gel contour and start applying it to the areas of my face that I want to have recede. When I get to my cheekbone area, I'm going to identify where the hollow is. Now, because I want my face to look a little more lifted, I'm going to come and contour a little bit above that hollow area to give my face the look of a lift. So if the hollow of my cheekbone is right here, I'm going to place that contour a little bit above that hollow to give my cheeks a little bit higher appearance. I'm also going to bring that contour down on the bottom of my chin because I want it to look like I have a little bit less of a double chin in that area. And we're only going to do one side right now so we can contrast and compare the difference between the two. Once I have that contour placed, I'm going to go in with my stipple brush and just start blending it in. And you can see right here in this area that I have created more of a slope on my forehead instead of just a straight angle up here. That darkness creates more contour on my forehead. Now as I come down to the cheekbone area, I'm just gonna pounce that brush up and down and blend that contour in and create the look of a hollow in that area a little more than I have naturally. That's going to start carving out that cheek area on my face and making my cheekbone pop out a little bit more from the illusion of this looking like it's set back because it's a little bit darker. I'm gonna go ahead and just contour this area underneath my chin and you can see what a difference that makes in creating a chin line down here just through the contrast of a darker area. Now compare it here to over here. <laughs> you can see it's a huge difference. This looks a little more loose. This looks a little tighter and like I have a firmer chin line. So I'm just going to pounce that contour in so it's nice and blended in. And you can see the difference on this side compared to this side. This looks like I have a more defined cheekbone and it's a little bit higher. This side looks less defined and a little lower. Next, we're going to move into bronzer. When you're talking about bronzer, what you're generally thinking about is giving the skin a little bit of a sun-kissed glow. When you're doing that, you're also creating planes and angles on your face because of the darker color of the bronzer. The purpose of a contour is to really create shadow. The purpose of a bronzer is to really create more depth in the skin tone. It does act a little bit like creating more planes and angles in your face, but not not quite as much as a contour. I'm going to take my e.l.f. tapered brush, dip it into my bronzer right here, tap that off. Watch what happens when I apply this. So I have that contour that's created a little bit of a curve in my forehead and when I add that bronzer it just creates more life and warmth onto my skin. Now because that bronzer is a little bit darker than my skin tone it's also going to create planes and angles in that area, but mostly a bronzer is just going to give life to the face and a little more definition in the areas. Now look at the difference in my cheek area right here. You can see that that bronzer has created more depth in that area and given me kind of a sun-kissed glow, which is very, very flattering. It keeps the face from looking so flat. It creates a little bit more depth here. Compare that to the other side and you can see how powerful a good bronzer can be. I'm going to load up my brush a little bit more and I'm going to apply that bronzer down at the bottom of my chin and really work to blend that in. One thing I can say about makeup on mature skin, at least my mature skin, is that blending is the key. Blend, blend, blend. Because my face is not smooth, I have wrinkles and crinkles everywhere, making sure that my makeup is really blended is so important. Now that we have that area contoured and bronzed and it's looking like I have more of a cheekbone on this side than on this side, now's the time to apply blush. I have found that blush placement is so important as I've gotten older because my cheeks aren't as high as they used to be. I can smile and the apples of my cheeks will be up here, but when I don't smile, <laughs> 
<laughs> they really, really drop. So the last thing I want to do is smile and put my blush on that apple of the cheek because when I stop smiling, that apple is going to be much lower than what I want it to be. Placing the blush on my face is very, very critical, and I find that it makes a big difference in how lifted my face looks. The most important thing to remember is to apply the blush to the upstairs area of your cheeks. And the way that I define that is by looking straight forward and right where my iris is, I don't want my blush to go inside of that line. As I'm looking straight forward, I want the blush placement to be on the outside area from where my iris is. So I'll draw that area down and I want the blush up on top of my cheekbone and I even can bring it up into the temple area. I know that sounds counterintuitive and a little silly, but it really does work. I chose this blush because it is so pretty. It is just a beautiful, glowy, transparent blush of color on the cheeks. So I'm going to take my brush, I'm going to dip it into the blush right here, tap it off, and then I'm going to place that on the upstairs area of my cheek. Keep in mind, because your brush is loaded with product, that the first place you put that brush is where the most pigment is going to go. So make sure that that's exactly where you want the emphasis of the color to be. So I'm going to place that brush right here on the upstairs area of my cheek. I'm not going to bring it past that center point where my iris is when my eyes are looking straight forward and I'm going to tap it right up into that temple area. Now why do we want to put it up in the temple area? Because that creates the illusion of a cheek that's a little bit higher. Once it's blended in, it looks beautiful. I know it looks a little weird and funny before it's blended in, but it really does work. So I'm just gonna build that color up in that upstairs area, right above where we placed that contour. And as I do that, it's going to create a very glowy, blushed look on my cheeks. One of the things that you might notice is when you put your blush on, it looks terrific. Ten minutes later, it looks like your blush has disappeared. Well, the reason is, is that as we're tapping that blush on our cheeks, it's creating blood flow in that area and our cheeks are getting naturally pinker on their own from that movement of the brush on our skin. Once that blood flow recedes back to normal, that's why our cheeks don't look as rosy anymore because that blood flow has diminished from the area settled down. So you can go ahead and put on a little bit more blush than you think is appropriate because as everything settles in, you'll find out that it's just about perfect. And you can see as I place that blush, it's not going any further than the center point of where my iris is as I look straight forward. I want my cheek to look lifted. I want all that color to be in the upstairs area of my cheek. Now I'm going to take a big fluffy brush and I'm just going to blend that in. Blend, blend, blend. That is the motto I have for makeup on mature skin. So you can see we have that blush all blended in now. It's in the upstairs area of the cheek and even a little bit up into that temple area, but once it's blended in, it looks very pretty. And you can tell the difference between this side and this side. The cheekbone looks a little bit more defined and we have a nice rosy glow in the upstairs area of our cheek. Now it's time for highlight. I love this highlight. <laughs> This is one of the prettiest highlights I've found for my more mature skin. This is in the color Pearl. Again, it's from Makeup by Mario. So I'm going to load my brush up right here, tap it off, and where the highlight is going to go is right on top of my cheek. What that's going to do is it's going to push that cheek out. Because this is lighter and it's also going to be reflective and catch the light, it really brings that area forward and makes your cheeks look a lot fuller and a lot plumper. So I'm just going to hit that right at the top of my cheekbone because that's the area that I want to come forward in space with that lighter color. Color. What I do, because I love it so much, is that I also put a little bit on the front of my cheek. Now we don't have any color there. We haven't contoured there, bronzed there, or put any blush there, but I do want to hit it with a little bit of this highlight. It's a personal preference. I love doing it because it brings that area of my cheek forward and makes my cheeks look a little bit fuller. 
Now that I have that highlight placed, I'm going to go back in with my big fluffy brush and I'm just going to blend that in. Blend, 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 blend. And there we have our cheekbone all created using contour, bronzer, blush, and highlight. And you can see what a difference you can create just by using color and knowing where to place them. Dark makes an area recede, light makes an area come forward. And you can see the big difference between this cheek and this cheek, plus this chin. <laughs> and this chin over here. You can really do a lot with good contouring, good highlighting, and some good color placed in just the right area. Here we have the finished look with contour, bronzer, blush, and highlight on both cheeks. And you can see you really can create more depth, more plumpness, and the look of a fuller cheek really easily with just the products that you have on hand. I had a lot of fun putting this together. I hope you found it fun, useful, and helpful. If you did, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, make sure you smash that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. You guys know I get so tickled when you take a few minutes out of your day to spend it with me. I appreciate that and I appreciate you. Again, I'm Kimberly. This is Pretty Over 50, where we talk everything makeup, skincare, and style for the over 50 woman. Make it a great day, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye now.